that he just wants to buy. A battle. We had, you know, we had an epic battle just to get this thing on. What about Chris between you know then and now? Would, would you get the same kind of emotion, feeling as he changed it all? I mean, what do you think about Chris? Well, oh, man, he's he's, uh, he's as easygoing as it gets. You know, doesn't matter. You know, it's, one of the things that impresses me about Weidman too is like when you guys will ask questions, he'll go deep into. But for instance, I'll give you an example today saying, yeah, we didn't expect the leg kicks. Leg kicks were bothering me, and uh, I said, I better start checking some of these kicks. You usually don't get guys to be that honest about the game plan and what happened, and, you know, that's just the kind of guy he is. As a guy who just knows fights, I mean, John were talking about earlier, do you think mentally it is harder for Chris the second time around thinking, all right, I did it once, and I just got to do it one more time? And do you think it's tougher mentally the second time? Around? I would have to say yes, but the crazy thing about Chris Weidman is, I can't remember. Oh, it's Chicago. I actually think it was Chicago. And he grabbed me and Lorenzo after uh, I did the fighter uh, meeting. And he said, listen, I want the Sanderson Silva fight, man. Give it to me. The shoulder's going to be ready. Um, I'm going to beat him. It's a fact. I'm going to beat him. And when I do, I'll give you guys an automatic rematch in uh, Madison Square Garden. Have you given any thought to if Anderson is a victorious in an automatic rubber match? I don't know. I, I don't ever think about that until the fight happens, you know? It's like when that last fight happened, rematch. You got to have a rematch. It would be great, and, you know, it depends. What, what, I mean, Anderson says, hey, I'm going to fight these last nine fights, whatever, but do you get a feeling at all that this could be kind of a, a career decider? Where you got, Because I, I just don't see, you know, if he loses twice to the champ, you know you're not getting a rematch anytime soon. I just can't see Anderson Silva, you know, going down and fighting the 15th-ranked guy in the world or, you know, some guy coming off the right. ultimate fight. Norm, normally you'd say that, you know, but I don't know. It's basically like, you know, it's like a Floyd, May, a Floyd Mayweather contract. For our sport, you know what I mean. So it'd be tough. I, I think the hardest thing for guys is to walk away from the money. Like I said, you know what motivates him. I, you know, I like what he said here today to, to the fan. He's like, you know, you don't realize what you have until you lose it, and now I want to get it back. Um, and, and I think the pressure that came with the belt for Anderson was never having lost in the UFC. You know, he never lost, and he was on this crazy ride and. Uh, you know, maybe that's the pressure. Maybe that was the pressure. But being the champ, in the UFC, there's nothing better than being the champion. The best. When he was asked about why he changed his mind and wanted this fight, he said the contract. So is that you saying, hey, we're not paying you to fight eighth guy. We're paying no, you to fight No, we didn't do that. I mean, obviously there's, you know, there's different money for title fights than if you're the champion. There's different money for that. So, uh, listen, the, 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 the glory and all the shit that goes along with it, it's great, but so does the money. The money, the money doesn't hurt either. Can you put, like, I know you won't be so specific, but can you put any sort of ballpark monetarily what that fight means to Anderson if he wins compared to what he loses? Financially? Financially. It's massive. You know, obviously, you know, the contract he has for the nine fights being the champion is huge. You know, I, I don't ever talk about I, I, I sit around and listen to people on the Internet, on Twitter, and scrums, whatever it might be, and you know, even liars who used to fight here and talk about you know stupid shit. Um, and then I hear something like yesterday, like did you hear where Arthur Jones came out and said the guy was basically saying it's pretty sad what your brother makes fighting, right? And it's like my brother, uh, my brother makes really good money, and, and he says. Uh, well, you make more, right? And he says, yeah. Me and my brother combined don't make more than what John Jones makes. So, you know, I don't, I don't ever say shit like that, but and none of the fighters do either. You never hear any of the fighters coming out and saying, you know, people are saying, oh, you're not being paid right. You don't ever hear them coming out and saying what they're making. There's no gag order on anybody. Anybody, it's their contract. They could say what they wanted to. They don't want people to know either. There's just, just no point in... It, it, it's never going to be a positive thing, people knowing what you make. It has nothing to do with, oh, we don't want the world to know or the media to know. I don't want anybody to know. It's just, it, it, it makes your life a lot more difficult and a lot more complicated. But, 
you know, John Jones makes more than his two NFL brothers, and his brothers are no joke. They're not like guys sitting on the bench in the NFL. They're real players. He makes more than they both make combined. Do you have expectations for this fight financially? I mean, obviously a, a great co-main event as well. We're not even talking about that yet, but I mean, could the, do you expect this to be the biggest fight of the year and maybe one of the biggest of, I of all time? I think it's the biggest fight we've ever done. To this point, it will be the biggest fight ever. You think it can approach UFC 100 numbers in It'll terms of fight I think it's going to beat it. I think it's going to beat it. I, I'd be shocked if this didn't beat it. The uh, You guys know you were all a part of it. 30 days, maybe more after that fight, it's all people talked about it. Even mainstream media were talking about that fight when it was over. Um, and it was so fun and, and exciting that night. And that's why I say, if you just put yourself, like I love fights, so if you put yourself, I, I can think of the, the jones Gustafsson fight that I was just at, which was fucking unbelievable. Just the energy in that place that night, watching that fight happen. Can you imagine when the lights drop, you know, when we do the, uh, and put both their heads pop up, and then we get ready for the main event, and uh, it's going to be crazy, man. It's going to be crazy. It's one of those fights that um, I, I want to be there live for that fight. It's going to be fucking insane. Insane. You, you mentioned Jones Gustafson. I was watching your scrum that you did yesterday in L.A. Just judging by your body language, the way you were talking, it seems like maybe you're kind of shying away from doing the rematch at this point. It's not that I'm shying away from it. It's uh, we haven't made a decision one way or the other, you know. Uh, but I'm not all... We're definitely doing, you know what I mean? We're that was down. kind of the feeling on Saturday night, right? I mean, we're all sitting in that room going, you got to do this again. Yeah. I, we, we were high, man. We were all high. <laughs> you realize that, right? We were all high. As high as you could be in the fight game is what we were on Saturday night. And then as you take a couple of days from movie, step back, you start looking at things logically and figuring out what to do. They're both 26 years old, you know what I mean? You guys are maniac. They're both 26 years old. They're going to they're gonna face each other again. It's going to happen. You know, and maybe we do the immediate rematch. I'm not saying no to that, but we're getting together. We have a meeting tomorrow. Me and Lorenzo are going to figure it out. Seems like, seems like the schedule will work out, though, for Jones to fight Super Bowl weekend. That would be a better summer than You don't know. I mean, you don't know if that would be a better seller than Sh- I mean, yeah. It seems like it would, but, you know, you know I don't know. I don't know. I don't know yet. We're going to sit down and talk about it. While we're on that, it's, it is still going to be pay-per-view, or, you know, on Super Bowl, or will it be Fox? It's uh, Fox weekend. Pay-per-view. How good is that Sacramento Fox card? Is that crazy? Yeah. Crazy. I'm just wondering if he was talking to Glover since all this talk's been going on. He was there that night, but I haven't talked to him, no. I've been everywhere since I left Toronto, man. I just got home. Yeah, I mean, that's normal. I'm sure he's, he's, wait, hey, what's up, buddy? How are you, Matt? I'm sure he's, uh, yeah, I'm sure he's freaking out, wondering what's going to happen next. That's, that's normal. Um, yeah, I don't know. That, that's part of the deal, though. I mean, it's part of the game. It happens. We, uh, we got a kind of an odd press release this morning on the way here that Bellator signed with Fox Sports International that uh, Bellator is going to be distributed in Latin America and Brazil on Fox Sports International. Now, I understand those are, you know, that is arm, weird. A, a ma- yeah, massive company, you know what I mean? Obviously a massive right. company with different arms and all that, but that just seems like a, an odd pairing. Did, did, did you know about that deal? I didn't. Apparently the, the pay-per-view uh, is going to distribute internationally, South America, Latin America, on the network, and then they'll start airing live events in 2015, according to the release. Um, how does something like that happen? It just doesn't seem like you know Fox would be supporting uh, essentially a rival organization. I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that. I'll find out though. <laughs> <laughs> I will find out for sure. Also today, I saw that the culinary union was a little upset at the backing by the gay and lesbian community that's standing up for the <laughs> UFC. What are you mad about, huh? Just that you're getting the support from one of those groups that they were trying to use in support of their cause to get the station's casinos to unionize. We, we deserve their support. You know, I, I know what I did a few years ago. You know, they like to go out and call me a homophobe. I'm not a homophobe. And if I was, I would tell you. And I would tell you why I was a homophobe. I'm not. I, I, I have a lot of friends, I have people who uh, I respect and care about that, that are uh, gay or lesbians. So I'm not a homophobe at all. 
it's one of the things, you know, I, I said that word a few years ago, and they like to use it, and, you know, you know me. Obviously, you know, there, there are certain things where you have to, uh, I don't know, certain people have to toe the line. You have to go out there. If you say something bad, you have to apologize. I believe in apologies if they're real. When I did that video, right, where I used that word, I offended about 30 different groups, okay? And they all wanted an apology. I gave one an apology. I didn't apologize to the other ones because I didn't feel they deserved an apology. I felt that the gay and lesbian community did, so I apologized. And the culinary union are the biggest bunch of scumbags on earth. They're fighting with the gay and lesbian community right now going, why would you support these guys? Go away, you fucking creeps. Just go away. You're not going to win, ever. You're not going to get what you want. You're not going to get station casinos, no matter how many scummy things you try to do behind the scenes. We will beat you every fucking time. Just go away. Do you apologize to the scumbag union for using No, I <laughs> won't apologize to them either. Danny, going back to the Gustafson and, and Jones fight, what was your reaction during the first, second, third round? I mean, were you kind of amazed as the fight progressed? or, or for, for the what? The first, second, and third oh, round. Oh, I mean, oh, of Jones first, and Gustafson? Yeah. I was, I, I was blown away. I was going crazy. I was pumped up. And it was one of those fights that, I mean, if you're a fight fan, that's why you're a fight fan, you know? And, and to be there live, sure. There's so many different ways to watch that fight. I keep thinking about this. Obviously, when you have people over your house and you're having a party, it's fun to watch a great fight. But I've always hear, heard that the bar experience is good. Like, if you go to Buffalo Wild Wings and places like that, it's supposed to be unbelievable. You know, like, all these people together and everybody's going crazy during the fight. And being in that arena that night, it was just... I was saying to the guys yesterday, I had Lawrence Fishburne was behind me. Dead Mouse was there. A bunch of guys from the Toronto Raptors were there, and they were going crazy, man. People were grabbing me and pulling me. Everybody was, like, high-fiving, standing ovations at the end of every round right until the fight started again, and uh, it was it was just it was an awesome night uh, of fights. And, and what, like, Toronto, people that live in Toronto on Twitter were just like, I can't even fucking believe what I just saw. I can't believe that I was here tonight and this just happened, and, you know... It, you, you hope in, in your career to see, you know, fuck, if you see five or six of those in your lifetime, you, you're, yeah. you're pumped, you know? The evaluation seems to be one of two ways. Either A, Jones showed he has weaknesses and that was a bad game, you know, performance by him, or B, he showed this heart of a champion and you got tested. Which, which side do you follow? Which is always going to be the case. Every time I got Anderson Silva didn't lose one fight in the UFC in how many years and was the pound for pound great. He loses one fight and you should have saw the bricks of negativity that came down in his head. It's just like, it's one of the, it's what I always tell the guys, you know, when we do these fighter meetings and stuff like this. Unfortunately, we live in a sport where you're only as good as your last fight. Everything you've accomplished, you could accomplish shit to go from here to fucking Los Angeles, right? And one, the, your last fight is what they will judge you on until your next fight. You know, one thing I've seen on the internet that I didn't really think of the night of Toronto was some fans are saying that that's the type of fight where you just hope it doesn't take away a little bit of, of those guys, you know, just because it was such a war. I talked to John Jones the next day, and John Jones, first of all, one thing that always happens with fighters, especially guys that are in wars, they don't, I don't even call them, talk to, they don't want to hear anything, man. They want to go home. They haven't been home in weeks. They want to go home with their family. They're banged up. They feel like they got hit by a bus and they just want to heal and relax and, and whatever. John, when I talked to John Jones the following day, Sunday, you should have heard how excited he was about that fight. He said, that was my favorite fight I've ever had. I love that fight. I learned so much about myself and about fighting and about everything from that fight. Like, he loved the fight. He was fired up. It must have been like the worst flight ever. I know. I know, man. It was crazy. I mean, I don't, I don't remember the last time that we had a fight where both guys left and went straight to the hospital for the main event. Yeah, so you you have no concerns about that, though? It seems like that's something you see you, that's been talked about more in boxing than necessarily you've seen with a fight where two guys, they go head-to-head, -head, you know, for whatever it is, 12 rounds or 5 rounds. Pedro Hizzo. Hizzo Couture won. 
Izzo was never the same fighter after that fight. He wasn't. He was a fucking machine going into that fight. And he lost that fight. He was just never the same. Eldrick Taylor, Chavez. Dana, last weekend with the Mayweather fight, with the judging of it, how does that, does that concern you at all? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, judging always concerns me. And the biggest problem for a long time now has been the state of Nevada. State of Nevada has been horrible with officiating. And it's funny, it took a big fight. They've been screwing our fights up for years. It took a Mayweather fight of this size for everybody to wake up and go, wow, Nevada sucks. Nevada isn't what it used to be. And I think that it really got the ball rolling to where it looks like it's going to be fixed now. What do you think Are you going to have input into that? I mean <laughs> no. No, I won't have any input into it. But, uh, you know, I think the governor, the governor, got as high as the governor. The governor realized that there, if you look at the promotion and, and that weekend of the De La Hoya, uh, De La Hoya of the uh, uh, Canelo Mayweather fight, um, it was flawless. Literally, the promotion, the weigh-ins, the fight, everything. You know, some people don't like Floyd's fighting style, but give Floyd the credit where it's due. He's 36 years old, went against this young beast and beat him. Made him fight his game and won the fight. And the only blemish on the entire weekend was the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Dana, did you see uh, Tito Ortiz last tweet say he was kind of inviting Randy Couture and uh, the Hampson Rock and everybody to go? Those guys are idiots. I, I literally don't want to talk about any of those guys anymore. They I don't care what they do. They said that they were going to the UFC 20 anniversary. I, know. I don't care what any of those guys do. They can throw a fucking party for all I care. I can care less. Since we're on the topic of Twitter and parties, Nate Diaz just tweeted that uh, he's not going to be able to make November 30th because he's attending his high school reunion. What was your reaction to that? I'm shocked. Diaz brothers are doing something crazy. I'm shocked. Nothing. You know, I don't know. I I, 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 I heard about it yesterday. Somebody told me yesterday about it, but I haven't talked to Joe or Nate or anybody, so I don't know. I don't even know if it's true. You were mentioning that. The year has been great. It's been an amazing year for us, uh, coming off the worst year we've ever had. So, I, I, I was talking about this yesterday too. I'm glad that happened. I'm glad that we went through that last year. Because if you would have told me the year before that that was possible, I'd have said, you're crazy. It's impossible. No, there's no way that that many people could get hurt and consecutively. And, and uh, how about Calgary? An entire card got wiped out. And then half the second card got wiped out to Calgary. It just, I would have never believed that that could happen. Now I know that it can happen. I know it is possible. And uh, if there was ever a testament to all the naysayers about the validity of, of, the, of the UFC as a sport and the fact that we have the staying power, that year proved it. So does that bring about any changes in the way you That's handle great. business? No. Nope. You're lucky or you're not. Right. This year we've been lucky, last year we were not. I was going to say, you know, an event like this where you're taking two guys on a world tour, you know, a full week of press all well, around the world, what did, happens if one guy gets hurt? It happens. We did a world tour with all the other fights too. And, you know, thank God, to, even when bad things happen, slide Pettis in there and it ends up Pettis Henderson in his hometown and you know that was a great fight too. Have you already started receiving like uh, celebrity requests to come to this fight? Oh, yeah. All right. So this fight and uh, the GSP fight people were asking for tickets long before tickets were even on sale. Funny because you guys know who Donna is right? Works for UFC so Donna has been doing you know, the event side since she was my secretary. She started as my secretary. Now she's a big shot over there. And, uh, but she used to take tickets and all that stuff. Just in people asking her for tickets. Just people asking her for tickets. $750,000 in tickets for the Anderson Silva Chris Weidman fight. That's what Donna has sold. Alone. No. I haven't even been to the office yet. 
since I went to New York last week. I still haven't set foot in my office yet. Can you talk to us a little bit about the, the Pettis and Josh Thompson matchup and uh, what made you go with Josh Thompson? Um, we thought he deserved it. We, 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 uh, we thought he deserved it, and we gave him the shot. And I think it's going to be a great fight. You know, both those guys fight a lot alike. You know. His title position. Shot. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he's bummed out, you know, twice now in a row. But, um, you know, it happens. You know, look what happened to Pettis. Um, you know, uh, who else just went through this? Somebody else just went through this. Look at look at Dominic Cruz. I mean, he's still the champion, but, you know, these things happen. Look at Burrell. Burrell, we really have all, me, you, the fans, really overlook Hannah Burrell and how fucking great this kid really is. And somebody asked a question the other night, you know, do you think you're not getting the respect because it's the interim title? Well, he's beating all the guys that Dominic Cruz would have been fighting if he was here. So he really has flown under the radar this whole time. And, and uh, I got dope slapped on Saturday about how great, you know, I was like, holy shit, this kid. I started looking through his stats and going, fucking eight years? This guy hasn't beaten eight years. Like he's five on, top ten guys in a row. He's now, won yeah. 21 fights in a row. He won the title and has defended it. Wow. Yeah. There's no regret because I like Dominic, and, and it's it's almost I felt so bad for this kid. Ultimate Fighter happens. He's supposed to fight Uriah. Pops his knee on the show training, and was supposed to get a piece of pay-per-view on the Anderson Silva, Chael Sonnen, you know what I mean? Rematch. That's a, I'm not kidding you, that's a fucking lottery ticket. It's like jumping up and going, holy shit, I fucking won. And then where'd my ticket go? I lost my fucking ticket. And there's no proof that he had the ticket. You know what I mean? That's literally what it's like. You might never have the opportunity to make that kind of money again for the rest of his life, you know? So. On who? Oh, I didn't even know Nate did this. He, he tweeted it. And, you know, did he, did he talk to Joe Silva? Did he, you know. If he really tweeted that he's going to his high school reunion and didn't call Joe and those guys and say, hey, I don't think, you know. He did really tweet it, but there was like a dot, dot, dot uh, at the end of that. He also tweeted he was going like to fight Pettis. It seemed like a joke to me. Dana, what are your... I don't take Twitter for news, you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't take it for, for the... It's not an official fight contract. Right, right. It's not an official statement. Dana, uh, Underlay and Chelsea, they keep calling each other, uh, even if uh, Chelsea already has a fight. And then they said that it, he's going to uh, bet uh, $100,000 on himself for this fight. <laughs> Do you think this fight can happen like in the next year? Because he said he, he, could, uh, he could fight from January well, on. These guys definitely want to fight each other, and I'm never one to not let guys fight each other. So if they want to fight, we'll figure it out. It's a matter of when. And I mean, uh, Vanderlei's still hurt. Vanderlei's not going to be. He said that he's going to start. He already started training, and he could be ready for January. For January? Yeah. January, February is when he was supposed to be ready. You know, what's your thoughts been on the Ultimate Fighter so far? I love the Ultimate Fighter. I'm, I'm further in it than you guys are, so it's a great season. Are you what, uh, what can we expect coming up, I mean, uh, without giving too much away? And uh, great fights. Have you talked to Rhonda about how she's We talk all the time. We talk every few days, if not every day. Is she upset by uh, the way she's coming off? As she predicted before the show aired? You know, she, she gets a little... I, I, I told her. You know her. I'm what? Sure. That's her. That's who she is. That is who she is. What are you, why are you going to be fucking worried about who you are? And, and you know, the, the chick that you see on this show is why women are in the UFC right now. Period. That's who she is, and... Uh, 
What are you going to do? You are who you are. I mean, what do you give a shit? The first... Like, oh, I used to love her, now I don't. Who gives a fuck? You, what, are you going to date her? You're going to marry her? You're going to sweep her off her feet and take her away and, and, and set her up for the rest of her life? You don't love her anymore. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Oh, well. <laughs> you know? It's, it's ridiculous. The first week of rankings, I mean, sorry, the ratings probably weren't what you were expecting, but then you saw a rebound in the second week. Are you satisfied with the direction of the ratings right now? That's, that's you know, when, when you do the reality show, that's what it does. You have episodes that go up and they go out down. And uh, I, I'll give you another example. The ratings just came out for the prelims for Saturday. Uh, it came out this morning. It's like we did 700 and something thousand. We're on a new network. This is how, this is how it works. This is how it worked when we went to... Uh, with FX, too. We went to FX, and you got to do all the work to get the people back over onto the new network, know where we are, and it takes time. Um, and, yeah, I mean, am I happy with the ratings? We're the highest-rated thing on that network by eight to ten times. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled with what we're doing over there. How closely have you been able to follow updates on Mac Rice and the promotion that you guys play in? His, uh, his wife keeps me updated on what's going on. It's looking good. It's looking, it look, it's looking better than it was. And, uh, you know, they took him off the feeding tubes. And, uh, and uh, he hasn't woke up yet from the last I heard from her. He hadn't woken up yet. But uh, it went from the worst diagnosis possible to it looks like he might, he might come out of this okay. You know? Like I don't know if he'll ever fight again, but he'll come out alive and hopefully be able to live a, a, a good quality of life. And do you, do you, I don't want to say like shower money on him or something, or is that, but typically that's a situation where you've kind of taken care of a guy. I mean, yeah. Has the promotion planned anything in terms of, uh, of what his future looks like? Yeah, we did. We did. I don't ever talk about that shit, you know what I mean? But we did. When you do stuff like that, how frustrated does it make you when somebody like Jacob Volkman is going at it you on Twitter? It doesn't frustrate me because, you know, the thing is I, I know who we are. I know what we do. You know, I, I, don't have to, I don't have to go say it in the public. I don't have to tell everybody what I do and how much I give and what I, what I do here and there. You know, it, if you look at the last... If you look at the last however many years, um, 13 years we've been in this business, thousands of guys have come and go, right? You got the same three fucking idiots out there. It's the same guys. It's not like, you know, Volkman's new. You know, Volkman, when I, when I read Volkman stuff, it's, 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 uh, you see what I told him on Twitter the other day? If you spent as much time working as you do bitching about what you don't have, you wouldn't have to bitch about what you don't have, lazy motherfucker. Go to work. You didn't make it, kid. What do you want me to tell you? You didn't make it. What should we have done? Paid you? Nobody even knows who the fuck you are. You've been fighting forever. you got a thousand followers on Twitter, and you're out crying about what you don't fucking have. If people wanted to see you fight, we wouldn't be having this fucking conversation. That's the real world. Okay? What am I supposed to do? Just bring everybody in and start fucking handing out money? Is that how it works for you guys? I mean, you guys have been doing this for only fucking... Only. Yeah, only for <laughs> yeah. yeah, he didn't even show up today, right? That lazy bastard. He gets paid the most and isn't even here. So, it's like, it's, it's just fucking unbelievable. And, and I don't even want to mention this guy's fucking name, but it's just like, it's like Ken Shamrock burst back onto the scene. Hey, everybody, I'm here to save everybody, whatever. No, you're trying to become relevant again, is what you're trying to do. Let's not forget that Ken Shamrock tried to sue us. That He said that his contract, Ken Shamrock owes me $175,000. And I'm coming for it, Ken. I'm coming for the fucking money, you piece of shit. I should have fucking, you should have fucking stayed wherever you were, hidden under the fucking porch somewhere. I, you know, the guy owes me $175,000 because him and his fucking scumbag lawyer put together some phony lawsuit that he lost. And he owes me $175,000 in attorney's fees. And he's out there talking about what he doesn't have and what guys aren't getting and all this shit. He's trying to make himself relevant again. And if anybody can't see that, you're just fucking stupid. So you did see them kind of form 
Yeah. 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 It is. Yeah. You know it's bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to crash it. What are they going to do? Yeah! They're going to come in and sit in their seats and fucking watch the fight. I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to crash it. Buy seats in the fight. Come. Have fun. Have a fucking blast. Grab some beers. Watch the show and have fun. You know? It's like the super friends. Yeah. The fucking super friends. We're going to come to the 20th anniversary. We're going to save the world. No, you're going to walk through the front door and sit in your seats and watch the fights. Maybe take some pictures and sign some autographs. Good for you. Have fun at the fights. You know what I mean? It's like, it's fucking, you're right, it is, it's comical. It's actually pretty funny. Um, and what's even crazier about it is these guys are working for other people. You guys work for other people now. You have jobs. You know, Rampage has, has kind of stopped talking. Rampage has moved on and, you know, he's doing his thing and you don't hear anything about Rampage, but I like that. The super friends, <laughs> the super friends are going to come to fucking UFC uh, here at MGM and save the world. Tito's buying, dude, first of all, Tito is the cheapest motherfucker on planet Earth, okay? This guy doesn't spend a dime for anything. He offered to buy the tickets. The, the, the two uh, shamrock knuckleheads ought to take him up on that one. We know Ken doesn't have the money. Frank probably doesn't either, but let Tito buy. The super friends. I love it. Yeah. Let Tito buy. It's the fucking first thing he'll ever fucking put his hand in his pocket and pay for it. Good. Do I have dating advice questions or something yeah. along those lines? Anybody, Anybody need to know how to pick up chicks or anything? Is there anything you want to tell us? Is there anything you're working on or anything like that that you want to let us know about? I already told you more than I wanted to tell you. All right.